You're listening to my cousin D Lil's on. It's D Lil's you rockin' with hip hop and home runs. We don't criticize pros, man. It's all fun. Urban media, yeah, we talking sports, debating issues, spitting game on and off the court. It's hip hop and home runs. Hip hop and home runs. Dot com. Happy New Year's from Hip Hop and Home Runs. It's your boy D Lil's. And, uh, you know, we're back for 2015. I want to, first of all, thank everyone for making me the number one urban sports radio broadcast in the world. You know, to all my listeners over in Moscow, Paris, Ireland, Africa, Beijing and all over the continental United States and U.S. territories. I just want to say thank you. You know, I truly appreciate my fans out there and my followers on both Twitter and Instagram. Continue to follow me at Hip Hop, capital N, Home Runs, and also on Instagram, Hip Hop and Home Runs. Um, I want to start off my show uh, giving the proper homage to Stuart Scott, rest in peace. Um... In terms of this industry, he's one of my idols, one of the people that I looked up to, a role model for young black men like myself. And he was a big reason that I I really wanted to get into this industry. Um, His pizzazz, his charisma are things that, you know, I often try to resemble in my podcast. So, you know, rest in peace. And, you know, I'm going to continue to keep his his family and particularly his daughters in prayer. We're going to start the year off, you know, following Black Monday. A lot of coaches were let go and were fired. So I want to do a little coaching carousel where I'm going to break down our Tier 1 coaches, our Tier 2 coaches, and then our Tier 3 coaches. Um, In my book, Tier 1 coaches are coaches that are considered the top available candidates um, with the most success and the most attractive resumes. Now, your tier two candidates or, you know, your tier two group of coaches are men who are capable of being head coaches where I've been in the past, but will will be best served as top assistants or offensive or defensive or maybe even special team coordinators. Excuse me. And then our tier three coaches, people in my humble opinion, humble art thou, are unemployed for a reason. And they have either been fired multiple times, been out of work for multiple seasons at a time, or have been long-time coordinators. Um, Typically, Tier 3 coaches need to strengthen their resume as coordinators prior to getting another chance at a head coaching opportunity. Like I said, this is in my humble opinion. You don't have to agree. Feel free to log on to hiphopandhomeruns.com and write on a thread if you disagree. So, um, signed with the University of Michigan as alma mater. It has to be Rex Ryan. Okay, I'm a big fan of Rex Ryan. If you know my roots coming from the Anne Arundel County, Maryland area, you know that my roots live with the Ravens. And, you know, Rex helped us win a Super Bowl in 2001. So, uh, as far as a compliment, uh, I'm sorry, as far as accomplishments are concerned, he won a Super Bowl as a defensive coordinator with the Baltimore Ravens in 01. He has two AFC championship appearances as the head coach for the New York Jets with a very mediocre, below average quarterback in Mark Sanchez. I believe ideally his ideal fit would be none other than the Atlanta Falcons. And here's why. Okay, you look at the Falcons team, Atlanta has a boatload of talent, a boatload. Okay. And they've had this talent for about four years now. Um, Tony Gonzalez has came and gone. But you still have two Pro Bowl receivers that are 6'3 and above. And particularly with the emergence of Julio Jones as their new number one receiver, you know, the Falcons are one of few teams who not only pose two large 6'3 or taller receivers, but they're both former Pro Bowlers. Okay, with one just entering his prime being Julio. Um... You know, teams simply don't hold on to this much talent for that long. Now, Rex's specialty has always been defense. Uh, 
and allowing him to take over a defense that was, you know, ranked in the bottom third of the NFL in a very weak NFC South division right now would pay dividends. Okay. And really, if you look at right now, the time frame, uh, you know, the NFC, the NFC South is here for the taking right now. Uh, Cam is still a few pieces away from being a consistent year in and year out contender as far as playoffs and Super Bowl is concerned. Drew Brees is on the decline. You know, the majority of his targets have came and gone. Uh, And you have Tampa Bay, who's yet to find an elite quarterback. Even if they do draft someone like a Jameis or a Mariota, or I'm sorry, a a a Mariota. Listen, I'm not going to pronounce your name right until you prove to me that you're worthy of that. So, Marcus Mariota, um, whoever they're going to draft, he has to come and improve himself. They're still a couple years away from that. So, right now, this division is still here for the taking. You're forgetting Atlanta won three out of the last four NFC South crowns. So, you know, Rex Ryan is notorious for taking average defensive units and, and stealing the appropriate defensive principles and sets to take teams to the next level. Um, Now, by no means is he offensive-minded, so they're going to have to still find an offensive coordinator. Fortunately, he has a franchise quarterback. That's something Rex has never had. Even in Baltimore, he was with the very basic Trent Dilfer. Uh, So, you know, he's no offensive genius, but when you have a cerebral guy like Matt Ryan... You don't necessarily need a Belichick type of mind back there running your plays. So, I think all in all, Rex Ryan's best fit would be the Atlanta Falcons. Moving on, my second coach, in my humble opinion, humble art thou, that's a tier one coach, my man Gary Kubiak. Okay? You want to talk about Gary Kubiak? Well, let's talk about him. He won a Super Bowl as a quarterback coach for the 49ers, who was his quarterback? Steve Young. Two Super Bowls with the Broncos. He's the offensive coordinator. Who is his quarterback? John Elway. Six years as the Texans head coach. Up and down. He was taking over at a, a club that was just an expansion team two years prior. And then this year, as a Ravens offensive coordinator, you know, the ball's still up in the air. Um... But the Ravens did rank 8th in total offense, 12th in points. And he did this without Pro Bowler Ray Rice and a 33-year-old Steve Smith. All in all, in my humble opinion, I believe Gary Kubiak will be the perfect fit for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, The issue with with Harbaugh this year, and it wasn't even I said John early. I meant Jim Harbaugh. The, the issue with Jim was the fact that he wanted total control. Jim is a college coach at heart. That's why he went back to University of Michigan, because he likes to tell his players, you need to be in by 1145. You can't tell grown men to come in the house at 1145. It's not going to happen. You can go back to college football, and that's what he did. Kubiak, on the other hand, is a what people would consider a player's coach. Okay, He knows, his, he knows both the X's and O's. Um, he's not very, he's not a motivational guy, but he is a team manager, and that and that's what the 49ers need. They need someone who's going to come in and just coach, not worry about personnel decisions, not worry about anything else, but taking the team and trying to build on that. The 49ers have a good team, okay? You know, aside from Flacco, Colin Kaepernick may be the most talented quarterback that he's ever had the opportunity to work with. You know, aside from John Elway and Steve Young, I'm, I'm I'm leaving the greats. I'm talking about in the present time period. OK, Kubiak has had success building strong offenses. That's what the 49ers lack. They have several playmakers in Crabtree, Stevie Johnson, Vernon Davis. And if he can collectively figure out a scheme, um, you know, that will change the 49ers from being so one dimensional. They always just run, 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 play action, run, 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 play action. Okay, well, you know, if he can change this the way that they have success in the NFC West, the 49ers can get right back in the Super Bowl mix. Uh, 
Now, he will still have to make running the ball a critical part of the offense, but by committee, okay? If you look at what Kubiak has had to work with, I'll take Frank Gore, Carlos Hyde, Marcus Lattimore over Arian Foster by himself or Justin Forsett by himself any day, any day. Uh, not to mention, Kubiak has had success, you know, in drafting great players. He drafted Arian Foster. He drafted J.J. Watt. He drafted Mario Williams. He drafted DeAndre Hopkins. These are elite players that he's drafted. So I expect him to be able to add to the current crop of talent that San Francisco currently has. Okay. Now, let's talk about Tier 2 coaches. Again, let me reiterate, Tier 2 coaches are men who are capable of being a head coach or may have been in the past, but will be best served as top assistants or coordinators. Number one on my list, Josh McDaniels. Um, you look at Josh's resume, three Super Bowls as a Patriots defensive back coach and offensive coordinator. He was given an opportunity in Denver. What did he do with it? He had a quick 6-0 start, followed by a poor finish. He got the cut early. Um, he had one year stint with the Rams as an offensive coordinator, but that was the year Bradford was hurt, and they ranked 32nd in the league. So in terms of being by himself, not under the tutelage of Bill Belichick, he hasn't had a good showing. So... In my humble opinion, I believe that he should stay in New England. Why not stay in a place where you have Tom Brady? You know, continue to build your brand. um, Continue to have this consistency in your roster. Continue to learn from Bilicek as long as you possibly can. Because, you know, Bilicek is, is, is able to teach you drafting. You know, how to draft, what to look for. He's able to teach you politics. You know, that was part of the reason why McDaniels didn't go so well in Denver because he wasn't able to politic with upper management, okay? In addition to that, he can learn from Belichick just how to game plan and the overall edge you need in football. Belichick always has a way of just finding edges over his opponents, Um, the small things. He's a very detail-oriented person, and I think that Josh McDaniels could afford to stay under Belichick for another couple years. Um, second guy on my tier two list, it may surprise you, but Rod Marinelli, again, Rod is not that bad. Now, what's people, what is he most remembered for? 0-16, 2018 with Detroit Lions. Okay. Worst record in NFL history. I understand that. Very little talent on that team. Very little talent. Um, But if we look at some of his other accomplishments, he had two top 10 defenses with Lovey Smith's Bears between 2010 and 2012. And he has really taken a historically bad Cowboys defense and made them above average. You know, they're they're top 15 defense. Um, And most importantly, if you look at Marinelli's defenses, they make plays. They make, you know, they turn over the football. They give their offense a chance to win, and that's what Chicago needs. Chicago is not a team that can have their offense carry them. Chicago Bears has always been a historically defensive franchise. That's why I believe that he can go back to Chicago and have success as a defensive coordinator, okay? One, he's familiar with the franchise. He's had previous success. Okay, he has a lot of young, new talent on there. Um, you have a promising corner in Kyle, Fu- Kyle Fuller. You have Will Sutton, Jay Bostic. You have a lot of talent there that he can make this defense formidable again. Um, and like I said, the Bears are a defensive franchise. He has history with that ownership there. Rod Marinelli would be a great fit for the Chicago Bears as their defensive coordinator. Okay, now moving on to my Tier 3 coaches. Again, let me reiterate, tier three coaches, they're unemployed for a reason. Y'all sorry, straight up. Um, They've been fired multiple times. They've been out of work for multiple seasons. May have been longtime coordinators. They need to strengthen their resume before they're given a head coach an opportunity. And number one on my list, Michael Smith. You bum. 
you were okay. I, I could care less what people say. Oh, you were within one pass of the Super Bowl this year, and another year you were won the NFC South, and not, it doesn't matter. You never capitalized on all these opportunities, and you had a young Roddy White in his prime. You had Julio in his first two years, and you did not do anything with it. You wasted Tony Gonzalez's last year. You could have went to Kansas City and helped them out. You know, if you look at Michael Smith's accomplishments, again, I hate to even give him this prop, give him these props, but he was the linebacker coach on my 2001 Baltimore Ravens Super Bowl team. Okay, now who was on that team? You had Ray Lewis at linebacker. You had Peter Bowyer at linebacker. You had Adelius Thomas at linebacker. And my Humble opinion, humble art thou. Um, he's always been a product of his players and not so much um, a motivational guy, not so much someone, not, not someone who has really polished talent and polished raw talent and, and build upon talent. So I think he would be a perfect fit as the New York Giants' new defensive coordinator. Why? Because the Giants have a solid. They have so, they have a solid defensive unit right now. They have solid talent on the team, especially if they can retain JJ. Um, you know they have Dominique Rogers, Cromartie. They have a veteran in Ontario Roll, um, Thomas coming off a good season. There's enough existing talent on that defensive side of the ball that he can mold. He can mold that team back into a championship caliber team. But it starts with the defense. Um, and if he can focus solely on the defense, not have to worry about the politics of football, not have to worry about managing offense, defense, special teams, let Tom Coughlin deal with that, worry about the defense. In addition to that, he's familiar with the NFC. I'm telling you right now, he'd be a great fit for the New York Giants. Moving on to my other bum coaches that are considered tier three, Doug Marone, absolute bum. He opted out of his contract this year, completely ruined EJ Manuel for a Kyle Orton who ended up retiring. Me personally, I don't think he deserves another chance. I think that's all you needed to see right there if you're an owner looking for, looking for a new coach. I think Woody Johnson would be making a terrible mistake if he brought him on as a Jets um, head coach, but hey, I'm not the general manager, I'm not the owner. If you look at Doug Marone's accomplishments, they're very few. Offensive line coach under Sean Payton. Now we're talking about post Katrina Sean Payton. So he left the season prior to them winning that Super Bowl in 2009. Um, you know, a couple stints here and there, coached with the Titans for a little bit, but mostly he's been an offensive line coach and then coached at uh, Syracuse for a few years and immediately tried. You know, he's one of those highly recruited college coaches to the NFL. It really hasn't worked for him yet. Um, me personally, I feel like his ideal fit would be the Cleveland Browns as an offensive line coach. Now, you all might feel, feel as though I'm being disrespectful. I'm just being real. Um, he'd be a good fit as an offensive line coach for the Cleveland Browns under his former assistant coach, Mike Pettin. Um, he has chemistry with him. And let's just put it out there. The Browns need an improved offensive line ASAP. You know, it's not like the line doesn't have talent. Joe Thomas, Joe Batonio, Swartz, they need some coaching. They need new blocking schemes. So what I would suggest is that no owner hire Doug Marone as their head coach and that he has to humble himself. Again, the NFL is either you come in humble or you get humbled. Doug Marone needs to get humbled and... He will have an opportunity to still coach in this league, but as an offensive line coach for the Cleveland Browns. Um, tune in. I'll be talking about some overrated coaches uh, that I feel like are on the market next time on HipHopAndHomeruns.com.